Here's more wrestling news for August 10th, 2022. And we're starting off this afternoon with Triple H, who's been in charge of WWE's creative team for less than a month now, a role previously run by his father-in-law, Vince McMahon. So far, fans have seen a lot of returns by former superstars, but wrestlers won't be all that's coming back. During the latest Raw, Rhea Ripley appeared with a bruised and bloody Dominic Mysterio, which was a much more violent image than what fans are accustomed to on WWE programming. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that WWE is expected to produce more violent scenes from now on. Dominic Mysterio wasn't leaking blood, but the idea was it was blood. There was something very much like red on his face, which before it was something they shied away from. So it was something, it's not like they've done this on a regular basis and maybe it's a one-time thing, but I'm guessing they'll get more violent as far as some of the angles go. Triple H is no stranger to violent bouts himself, as his feuds with Shawn Michaels and Mick Foley saw the game leave it all, and a lot of his own blood, in the ring. Fans have been happy with Triple H's changes so far, and we imagine this will receive another warm reception, as after years of toning things down for the networks, WWE are preparing to push the envelope once more. WWE has gone under several massive changes in recent weeks, with Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis' departures marking the end of an era. One name who's still with WWE is Kevin Dunn, but with the longtime WWE director often seen as nothing more than a Vince Yes Man, there's been some questions as to how long he'll be sticking around. It's said that Dunn is more of a fan of the entertainment side of sports entertainment, but according to Sean Ross Sapple Fightful, he's here to stay. While well, talent expected Kevin Dunn to be let go with the mcmahon Laurinaitis regime change, Triple H has said that Dunn figured into a big part of WWE's future. About a half dozen WWE talent we've spoken to pointed out the production style is something they're hoping would change in the near future. Specifically, one top talent and one former talent said that the reasoning they've given for some of WWE's production aspects undermine their in-ring work. We've also been told that WWE doesn't believe they have anyone currently that could replace Dunn, as the likely candidate was let go during a prior round of layoffs, and a return isn't likely based on how the exit went down. We've been told as of now, Dunn is expected to remain with the company. Not long after McMahon's retirement, it was said that Dunn's days are numbered, as Triple H is reportedly not close with him, and even if that is the case, the game is able to put business over his personal feelings. When it comes to WWE's biggest stars, few shine brighter than John Cena, who captured 16 world titles with the company. Cena dethroned the likes of JBL, Edge, Randy Orton, and AJ Styles to name just a few stars, but is there a 17th world title in Big Match John's future? At a Comic-Con in Wales, Cena was asked that exact question, and while he'd love to one day be a champion, he remains pessimistic about that possibility. I know I'm not done in the ring, but I'm realistic with where I'm at in my life. I'm 45, and I can tell you from being a 16-time champion, it's very tough to win. The top of that mountain is a young man's game. Cena's last title win came back in 2017 when he defeated AJ Styles at that year's Royal Rumble, but it'd also be one of his shortest reigns, losing to Bray Wyatt a month later. At 45 years old and a growing Hollywood career, the clock is ticking for John Cena, and we'll just have to see where he fits in this new era of WWE. Over to AEW now as the promotion is home to plenty ex-WWE superstars both on screen and backstage. Arya Davari is one of those ex-superstars as he's made appearances on Dark, and Fightful reports that he's now producing matches for AEW. Davari is said to be well-respected backstage, as last week's Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker vs. Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm was his handiwork. Davari had been working as a WWE producer in recent months, but was quietly let go recently, and while he's working on a trial basis, it's looking like a permanent role behind the scenes is in Davari's future. Ever since Triple H took over WWE's talent relations department, several names have returned to the company. Dakota Kai, Karrion Cross, and Scarlett have all returned to WWE so far, and we may already know who's next to return. On this week's Raw, Dexter Loomis made his return to WWE, and a tweet from WWE alum Eric Rowan got a lot of attention. Immediately after Loomis's return, the former bludgeon brother fired off a tweet saying how patient persistence leads to interesting doorways. Given how quickly he tweeted after Raw, many fans are calling this a tease at Rowan's return over two years after his release in April 2020. 
so far, all of the returns have been superstars cut within the last year, but with Bray Wyatt also rumored to return following a cryptic poem by the former Fiend, we'll just have to see if Rowan is the next to make his return to WWE. We've got some sad news to report now as former WWE wrestler Mike Masters has died at the age of 68. Masters, aka Michael Rocky Jones, was admitted to hospital after being diagnosed with throat cancer, having previously beaten the deadly cancer. Masters competed for the WWWF and New Japan in the late 70s and early 80s, and his biggest match came in the fall of 1979 when he challenged Ken Patera for the Intercontinental Championship. Mike was said to have been a nice guy who was well-liked in whatever locker room he walked into, and we'd like to offer our sincerest condolences to his family and friends at this time. From 1999 to 2012, Brian Gewurz worked for WWE as a writer, and over those 13 years, a lot changed in the company. Gewurz, who now works for The Rock's Seven Bucks Productions, is publishing a book about his WWE tenure. There's just one problem. True tales from the former one-time seventh most powerful person in WWE, and recently recalled a time when it was the writer who had to get physical. Speaking to the Cheap Heat podcast, Gewurz recalled getting into a slap fight with Paul Heyman, which resulted in both men being temporarily suspended. You'll love the chapter in the book where Paul Heyman and I get into an actual slap fight and get suspended from WWE. It was a... Uh, by the way, I get along great with Paul now. Well, you know, won the fight. I don't know if I would say that. You know that gif of Jerry and George from Seinfeld? I think it was, you know, it wasn't exactly Tyson Holyfield. Heyman has gotten physical himself on WWE TV from time to time, but it rarely goes well for Roman Reigns' special counsel. And regardless of who won this slap fight, the anticlimactic bout wasn't worthy of pay-per-view. Now, Karrion Cross certainly made an impact when he returned to WWE last Friday, inserting himself in the main event picture on SmackDown. In the closing moments of the show, Cross returned to WWE by attacking Drew McIntyre and having a face-off with undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns. With Reigns and McIntyre scheduled to face off at Clash at the Castle, Cross's timing is interesting, and some believe that he'll be entered into the title match in Cardiff. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer reported that this isn't the case, and that the internal show listing still has Reigns vs. McIntyre in a singles match to headline the show. Meltzer did acknowledge that plans could change, but said that he was explicitly told by a source within WWE that the main event won't be altered. With his impactful return and reports of being SmackDown's number two heel, it seems inevitable that Cross will one day have his shot at the title, but that won't come at Clash at the Castle. And we're ending today with the Judgment Day, who started at WrestleMania 38 with Edge and Damian Priest, but after including Rhea Ripley and Finn Balor, the Rated R Superstar was booted out. At the time, it was reported that Edge hadn't been kicked out by WWE's creative team, but instead demanded to be removed, reportedly because of an idea for the group to have more supernatural elements. Speaking to Stephanie Chase of Digital Spy, Priest was asked about the rumors and was quick to shut them down. I guess I understand why people thought that. I don't know where the actual rumor came from that that's what was planned, because it never was. If anything, we had conversations of how we didn't want that, and that included Vince McMahon himself, who didn't want the group to be supernatural based. We were all in agreement. We did some things that seemed that way. I know I did a thing with lightning one night, and the idea wasn't about supernatural, but it came off that way, and then we immediately went, okay, let's not revisit that because it came off that way. Edge may have founded the Judgment Day, but his time with the group was short-lived, but with a match between himself and Priest scheduled for next week's Raw in Toronto, it's clear that Edge's work with the group, albeit as their nemesis, is far from over. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.